Thank you. So, uh, and now for something completely different. Um, MEF, as many of you know, is an industry alliance, um, a standards organization. Now, I'm just going to talk uh, for, for the next uh, 20 minutes about what we're doing in order to enable automation. So just a background on, on how we uh, divide up our work. We've got four areas of work. Defining services, that's the connectivity services like uh, optical, carrier, ethernet, and IP. It's the digital services like SD-WAN and SECAS. Um, so we're defining what those services are. Uh, and we also have a section about certifying compliance with the standards, our definitions of services. Um, we have a community. Uh, we have a lot of collaboration with open source organizations, other SDOs, developer uh, groups, and so on. And the fourth area that you see on the top right there are the LSO APIs. And that's what I'm going to talk about uh, today. So where do we come from? We're, we've been defining carrier Ethernet services, for example, um, for, for many years. And one of the issues that's been coming up recently, of course, uh, in the last few years, is how long does it take to actually uh, deliver a carrier Ethernet service to a customer? And the answer is weeks or months, probably months. And so our members said, okay, what we need to do is we need to set up a new area of work to uh, accelerate the delivery of carrier Ethernet services and other services that the MEF is defining, uh, is going to be defining. And the only way to do that is to create a framework for uh, orchestration, orchestration of those services that will enable automation because it's only through automation that you get from months down to, to minutes uh, to deliver new services. Um, and so we had to create a framework, an architecture, and we did that as part of our MEF 55 uh, document. And we started breaking down the problem into uh, first uh, identifying the service and the service provider here at the bottom and saying, well, okay, we need to realize services through business apps and service orchestration otherwise known as OSSBSS, and uh, the customer uh, is going to interact with the business apps and uh, service orchestration to realize that service. And that's where we need to start doing the automation. And so we introduced this uh, framework, this paradigm uh, of LSO, Lifecycle Service Orchestration, which complements uh, SDN, programmable networks, it complements NFV, virtualized assets and resources. Uh, LSO pulls that all together in order to enable the uh, full life cycle of a service to be implemented, not only across multiple technology domains, but also across multiple um, uh, operator domains. And that's what it's really about. It's about creating these agile services through automation that span multiple operator domains and technologies. And so uh, if we break the, uh, the uh, problem down a bit further, what we have then is, well, we've got a service orchestrator, we've got business applications, uh, we've got uh, WAN controller, and we've got the service down here. The business applications need to operate, manage and operate a service. That's what they're looking at. Business applications want to see services. The service orchestrator then takes that and manages the infrastructure in order to deliver that service to the business applications and, and so on uh, down to the resources in the service. What we see here, east-west, is the subscriber is uh, requesting information about a potential service from uh, from the business applications, it's ordering, it's getting the billing, and it might be doing in-flight in uh, service control, still very high level. So what we said is this reference architecture for LSO has reference points, it has touch points with different parts of the ecosystem. Let's identify those reference points, let's give them names, and then talk about how we're going to define APIs that will be adopted by the industry at those different reference points. So here, uh, north-south, we have what we call LSO legato 
between the business applications looking down to the service orchestrator. We have LSO Presto looking down to the network view, and we have Adagio looking further down at the resource view. And we have Cantata uh, for the subscriber interacting with the business applications of the service provider, and LSO Allegro for in-time, uh, in-flight in, in uh, changes request to the service. And we added another two reference points, LSO Sonata for intercarrier business application to business application and interlude for service orchestrator to service orchestrator. So this is what it looks like in the big picture. What we see here, and I'm sorry, the words got a bit wrapped around here. Apologies for that. But what we show here is there's an end-to-end -end service, for example, from the customer site through to a cloud service provider uh, or to a data center or through to an internet cloud, whatever. But there's an end-to-end -end service that spans more than one uh, domain, operator domain. This is what we call the service provider domain. The service provider in MEF te terminology is the owner of the relationship with the customer. They are responsible for the service level agreement of the service, the end-to-end -end service that's delivered to the customer. Um, what we have here are the wholesale partners that are extending the footprint of the service uh, for, uh, in order to, uh, to complete uh, access to the different locations. So this is called an operator and this is called a service provider. And we, again, we see the reference points, Sonata, Interlude, Cantata, Allegro, and then within the domains, we see Legato, Presto, Adagio for each operator. This is a federated model. This isn't some super hierarchy. It's purely federated. Each of the operators each of the, and the service provider has its own domain, its own implementation of what we call uh, service orchestration functionality. And they interact through these uh, APIs east-west uh, between the operators, with the customer through Cantata and Allegro, and within their domain, Legato, Presto, and Adagio. So as I said before, we've got the uh, MEF55 reference architecture that describes all of this. And this is the big picture that we show uh, every time we're analyzing use cases and business requirements. And uh, just uh, sort of a footnote here. This area here, Sonata, LSO Sonata, is getting a lot of traction today in the industry um, for service providers. This is the reference point. If we're looking at Sonata, this is the reference point that's of most interest to service providers today. The things that go on there, things like checking service uh, uh, serviceability, um, uh, getting quotes, uh, ordering, things that were done by email, fax, telephone call should now be replaced by uh, APIs for automation of those processes uh, across LSO Sonata. Now, obviously, you're going to say, well, we've been doing that for years. There have been um, APIs running between operators, but it's been bilateral. There's been no agreement. There's been no standardization of the APIs at, those, uh, at that LSO Sonata interface, uh, that reference point. And so what's happened is that the service provider members of MEF have got together and they said, instead of, of doing bilateral arrangements every time, let us just sit down and agree APIs that we can then implement once and they will work with many of our partners. I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand. How many of you here are involved with product in your organization? Could you just raise your hands if you're involved with product? Okay. How many of you are involved with IT? Okay. So quite often we are actually talking to the product people. But it's actually the IT people that make this happen. And I think many of you will be aware that there's still a lot of transformation in the industry uh, in the different service operator organizations to get um, the IT department working in a, a much closer way with uh, the product people and the rest of the organization. It tends to be today 
according to the, the vertical silo uh, OSS BSS model, what we're talking about here is everybody working together to get those uh, APIs not only defined, but they actually have to be implemented as well. So that's LSO Sonata. LSO Presto down here is of much more interest to the vendors. And we'll see that this is where the SD-WAN controllers, this is where the SDN primarily is with northbound interface into the service orchestration functionality. So um, making this standard means greater interoperability of vendors uh, and greater choice. So um, we'll take a couple of examples of where we're collaborating with um, uh, other SDOs, open source projects. When I talked about LSO Sonata um, automating the, uh, the part of the life cycle between operators, um, you may well have recognized that a lot of those things that I talked about, things like uh, uh, quote, order, billing, and so on, have actually been defined as APIs in a TM forum. So what is it that MEF has done at, uh, at LSO Sonata? What we've done is we've actually taken the TM Forum uh, open APIs and we've said, okay, but we need to make them suitable for the services that are defined at MEF because the input that we got from our members and everything's member driven is they were saying, well, actually the use cases that MEF has defined, these service definitions are very, very helpful in actually implementing the TM Forum APIs. And so what we're doing is we're um, defining the payload uh, as a service. Uh, it's a service description, if you like, service definition that comes in as a payload that runs through the APIs, the generic APIs for those, uh, for those actions in the lifecycle that I mentioned before. And in fact, we're now doing work to create a common model a common uh, information model for all the definitions of, of MEF services, whether it's optical, carrier ethernet, uh, IP, SD-WAN, in the future, SECAS, um, so that it can pass uh, as a payload through TM Forum Open APIs at LSO Sonata. So that's one example. Another example of the collaboration and the uh, implementation of standardized APIs is, if we look at that diagram from before, in this way, what we see is this example, this use case, where there's an end-to-end -end service that spans two operators. And each operator, as I mentioned before, has its own domain, its own service orchestration, its own set of business applications. And we're working in a federated way. So, for example, a customer may request an end-to-end -end service via LSO Cantata here, with the intention that their two locations or this location and the cloud service provider will be connected and a connectivity service provided end to end um, by this service provider here. And in this example, um, the service provider is using ONAP for its service orchestration. Uh, its northbound interface is LSO Legato. And in fact, we're collaborating with, uh, uh, with ONAP uh, on their external API project. They are using both MEF work and TM Forum work at LSO Legato to standardize their northbound interface. And similarly, we're using the TM Forum APIs, as I mentioned before, for the intercarrier. Here, the operator might be using a completely different uh, service orchestration, maybe using a commercial solution. It could be, uh, it could be Blue Planet, could be Netcracker, it could be NSO. Uh, there are a, a range of possibilities here. This, uh, this service provider does not know and should not know what the implementation inside the uh, partner's uh, domain is. All that matters is these open APIs and the interface here and making sure that whatever information is required is passed back and forth uh, in a standardized way um, and to create this federated end-to-end -end solution. So, um, We've been uh, collaborating, I said we are defining APIs, there's been uh, progress, I won't read through this with you. Um, we've got uh, a lot of work ahead of us. We're already uh, starting to collaborate with GLF, uh, which is uh, an executive level um, industry uh, alliance of service providers 
um, that are, uh, are looking at uh, adopting MEF uh, APIs, and we're really focusing a lot of our work on that. Um, but in general, we've got a very, uh, very uh, comprehensive roadmap for each of those reference points, whether it's Cantata, Allegro, Sonata, Interlude, Legato, Presto. As you can see, that intercarrier reference point has got the, uh, the, the biggest uh, suite of uh, APIs that we're working on. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of that is also actually reflected in the subscriber-facing Cantata, um, but also North-South, there's a lot of work, especially at Presto, that's going on. Um, how do you access the work of MEF? Uh, we, at each of the reference points, all of these, set, well, actually six of the reference points, we're creating a package of uh, swagger specs, example code, uh, and other, uh, and the standards, of course, uh, data models, making them available in a package that we call SDK, uh, which is available to the service provider and vendor, uh, but the service provider IT departments. Um, there's an SDK for Presto, for LSO Presto. There's another SDK for LSO Sonata. And we're constantly uh, enhancing it, adding material there. And so uh, if you're interested, uh, please let us know. You can access it through this link here on this, uh, or you can contact me, of course, or anybody at MEF to uh, get a look at what's, on, what's going on in the latest version of the SDK for a given reference point. Um, I'll just wrap up here with the last minute or so um, to say that it doesn't end here. Uh, there was a very interesting presentation by Mark Cohn uh, from Spirant uh, b before me and the other track where he's talking about the convergence of um, the concepts of one-off certification and service assurance and how what we're beginning to see in the industry is, is really ongoing testing, ongoing verification, validation, um, which will also include compliance with standards. But what we have to remember is we're not certifying APIs here. We're certifying orchestrated services. So just like um, the certification program as until now at MEF enabled service providers to um, prove that they can deliver a static service according to the standards, for example, carrier ethernet, MEF 6.x and 10.x, now they will be able to also certify that that service can be orchestrated at different reference points. It can be, for example, an access e-line certified via LSO Sonata using the APIs for um, serviceability, pre-order, order, billing, and so on. So what we're seeing now is the realization of the ability to not only uh, deliver uh, standardized services, uh, ever more complex services will need to be orchestrated in an automated way, and the proof of the pudding is in the uh, certification. So I'll stop there and ask uh, and any questions. Any questions? I have a question for the audience. When are we going to have a proof of concept showing a service orchestrated between two operators, one of which uses OSM and the other uses ONAP. We've already shown ONAP to something proprietary. That was a year and a half ago. We'd love to see one with OSM on one side. Okay, we okay we've got that. a buyer. Okay, I will see you afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> you will. If there are no other questions, thank you very much, Great. Daniel. Thank you very much.